Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, if you're excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning, why don't you give God a hand clap of praise? As we can see, it is 1130. As we begin to prepare for worship, I'm going to invite you to take a moment and send some time in prayer. It is our custom here at Germantown that before worship each week, we gather in our seats for prayer to begin to set the atmosphere for worship, to invite the Holy Spirit into this place. So for our guests, for our family and friends, I'm going to invite you over these next five minutes to begin to saturate this atmosphere with prayer. Invite the Holy Spirit into this place as we celebrate our risen Savior, as we celebrate our risen King. I'm going to invite you to spend some moments in prayer. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand all over your feet this morning as we begin to invite the Holy Spirit into this place. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what this weekend represents. As we begin this service, we invite your presence into this place. 
that everything that is done will be pleasing to you, that your name would be lifted up and someone would draw closer to you. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Lord is alive and doing well, that he got up 
on that Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Come on, let's celebrate the resurrection this morning. Is that all right? Come on, I serve a risen Savior. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He's in the world today. I know that he I is living. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say. Whatever men may say. I see his hand I of mercy. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. give God a praise in this place. Has God been good to anybody today? Come on, let me try that again. Has God been really good to anybody today? Come on, did you come to worship a good Savior? Did you come to worship a good Father? Did you come to worship a good God? Somebody give the Lord a praise in this place. 
Come on, anybody know that this is not a funeral? This is a celebration. This is not a funeral. This is a celebration of a good God, of a good Savior, of a good King, of a good Father. Come on, is there anybody that came to give God worship? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be you may be seated. Amen. Amen. It is good to see you all today. Look at somebody say, it's good to see you today. Come on, look at somebody else and say, it's good to see you today. Listen, I don't, I, I, listen, there are, there are different things to celebrate. There are different things to give God a praise for. But when I think about the fact that we serve a Savior who died for us, when we serve a Savior who bled for us, when we serve a Savior who looked beyond our faults and saw our needs, a Savior who took lashes and beating, that is reason enough for me to give God glory. That is reason enough for me to give God praise. I just want to know, is there anybody in here that's just grateful for Jesus and grateful for the sacrifice? And I'm not talking about Joel and B. I'm not talking about uh, Tyrese Maxey. I ain't talking about Jalen Hurts. I'm talking about the one. Oh, come on, bless the Lord in this place. Come on, are there any grateful people in here that can say, I showed up because he saved me, raised me. I'm waiting on you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Y'all remember how you were when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. I got something better than that. He got up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Germantown. It is so good to see you all here in worship today. Listen, God has been good, everybody. Amen. Can we praise God? If you are either online or in person, can we praise God for what happened in this place last night? I praise God for the gift and the ministry of our creative arts ministry. Sister Lynn Shirley and her team did a phenomenal job presenting uh, the gospel in creative ways. Amen, somebody. And so we praise God for that. We, we just honor God uh, for that experience last night. Today is our family and friends day. Amen. Amen. It is so good to see you all here in worship. We want you to know that at the end of worship, we are going to be doing our right hand of fellowship. And we are going to be officially welcoming all 14 Amen. new members. Okay, let me try that again. All 14 new, 14 new members into the Germantown SDA Church. God has been good to us. And so we, what we are going to do at the end of worship, we are, at the end of worship, we are going to uh, line up, line them up at the front. We have some gifts for them to just show them and to welcome them, y'all, into the life of this church. And then after that, uh, we are going to march around and greet them. Now, after you all march around and greet them, here's what we are going to do next. After you all march around and greet them, we are going to go right outside. Amen, somebody. We're going to go right outside. And when you go outside, there's going to be a food truck. Amen. I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to name what's on the menu because I'm going to forget some stuff. But I heard there's like uh, chicken tenders, french fries, uh, loaded french fries. I don't even know what that means, loaded french fries. But we'll see what that means. Uh, some other stuff. Somebody say, I know what that means, Pastor. And it's going to be good. And uh, some other free food. Amen. Amen. Hey, you ain't got to do nothing but smile. Amen, somebody. Uh, so free food and, and then some uh, soft pretzels and some... Um, some, some soft pretzels and uh, some water ice, amen, and some other stuff and some snacks. Here's what you have to do, though. Here's what you have to do. We're going to ask that you all would register when you go outside, amen. Amen? amen? So when you register, you are going to get tickets. All right, everybody? So when you register, you are going to get tickets. You cannot get food from the food truck without a ticket. Y'all hear me today? Amen. So if you walk up like, hey, you're going to be like, where's your ticket? And we're going to send you back to the registration table. Is all right? You get a register, you get a ticket. And then we're doing photos for families. Amen. 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 So you're going to have to get a ticket to get your picture. Amen, somebody. Amen. 
So if you want to register, you'll go outside, you'll get your ticket. And then we also have outside bathrooms, amen, amen. and all of those things as well. And so we are excited about our family fellowship. So please do not run home right after worship. Amen, somebody. Amen. But hang around and let's have a good time as we celebrate being a family and as we celebrate worshiping together. The other thing I want us to remember is that tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we are going to be virtual. Uh, we're going to have a virtual resurrection service on tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Amen, somebody. And so we want to celebrate the truth of the resurrection. Our music ministry uh, will be uh, singing. Our worship team uh, will be leading us. Yours truly will be preaching. And so you will see us on Facebook and YouTube tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We're going to rebroadcast it in the afternoon as well. Amen. And so I'm looking forward to that. Listen, is anybody, do we have any first-time guests with us in worship this today? First, I'm going to ask, did anybody celebrate a birthday this week? Anybody celebrate a birthday this week? Somebody said my sister. Great. Marlene, happy birthday, Marlene. Anybody else celebrate a birthday? Happy birthday. Anybody else? Happy, come on. Don't be shy. Happy birthday. We're going to celebrate you. Amen. Amen. Do we have any first-time guests with us in worship today? First-time guests. Can you stand? If you are a first-time Come on, can you stand? If this is your first time at Germantown, come on, pop up like popcorn. Come on, come on. We want to celebrate you. We want to love on you. This is Family and Friends Day. We want to welcome you to the Germantown SDA Church. Listen, I want you to know the first time you come, you're a guest and you're new and all of that. But that, that, let me tell you, like, that's over. Um, we are really intrusive. So now that you've been here one time, you are family. We have literally adopted you. All right? And so we just are so happy to have you here with us in worship. Isn't it good to see our guests, everybody? Amen. Has God been good to anybody this week? Come on, did you come to praise the Lord today? Well, this is our time where we transition in worship. I'm going to ask that we would get up, just greet somebody around you, somebody next to you, show somebody some love, and let's continue to stand and sing as we continue in worship today. Come on and put your hands together as we celebrate our risen Savior. He's alive. He's doing well. He took on all of our sins on the cross and got up with all power in his hands so that we can one day be with him. Come on and celebrate our risen Savior.
when he got up on that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He snatched this thing out of death. He snatched this thing out of whatever situation we were facing. That even when we're up against it, we already know that with God on our side, we are victorious. Because he's claimed the victory on that day. We just want to thank him for getting up. We want to thank him that we are victorious when we are with him. Can we just lift our voices all over the sanctuary to our God? Come on, if you know that you are victorious with Jesus, why don't you lift up your voice and sing with me? Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Let's just sing that. Oh. in a situation where you need Jesus to be victorious in your life, this is the time where we go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask if you have something that you are dealing with. We still believe there's power in prayer. Amen, somebody. When, when he was, when Jesus was in the sanctuary, he doesn't say that my house should be a house of worship. He doesn't say that my house will be a house of preaching. He says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for everybody. I'm going to ask uh, if you have a need, something that you've been praying for, this is the time where we are going to call on the name of Jesus. It is so good to see Aubrey and Kim in worship today. I Many of you may not know, Aubrey Paul lost his father unexpectedly a couple weeks ago. And we want him to know that our prayers are with them and that we love them and that we care for them. There have also been those who have others who have been dealing with grief and loss in this season, dealing with the in the hospital, sickness. And so today is a day where we are going to call on the name of Jesus. Anybody still believe that something happens when you call on the name of Jesus? Come on, anybody really believe that something happens when you call on the name of Jesus? 
And so if you feel comfortable, I'm going to ask that you stand as we prepare for prayer. But maybe you want to go deeper. You want to come to the altar. The altar is open as we call on the name of Jesus. Maybe there's something you bought with you to worship. And you're saying, I want to bring it to the altar. Coming to the altar just symbolizes that you are leaving your frustrations here. That you know that God is able to fix it, that God is able to heal it, that God is able to restore it. Maybe you've got a need. You came today, you are saying, there is something that I need to give to God. Amen. You are saying that there is something I need to hand off. I know that I can't deal. Am I, am I talking to anybody who knows that there's some stuff you just can't manage on your own? And so we are going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. We will, as we call on the name of Jesus and we continue in worship. Good morning. Oh, I didn't hear you. Good morning. I'm going to ask you, if you can stand, to stand reverently. A, a great deal of times, sometimes we ask ourselves when we're at a loss for prayer, how shall I pray? I direct you to the Psalms. There's very little that you can talk about that hasn't been said in the Psalms. So today I borrow liberally from the Psalms. Please bow your head. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor too profound for me. The Lord is my shepherd, my leader, my protector, my defender, my armor, my director for my life. I shall not want because he anticipates my needs, restores my spiritual cupboard, provides before I ask. He makes me to lie down in green pastures on land I did not make, under skies I did not paint, in a life-sustaining atmosphere I did not establish. He leads me beside still waters. He brings peace to my mind, my heart, and my body. He restores my soul. I can achieve spiritual integrity through his word. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, for he is God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, while assaulted by torrents, floods, and streams of wickedness, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. From my birth you have safeguarded me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. With gentle rebuke you have corrected me. Thou protest, a ta preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have blessed me despite the accusations, accusations of those who would harm me. Thou anointest my head with oil illuminating my mind with heaven's blessings. My cup runneth over. You provide all that I need together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the church said amen, amen, amen and amen. Come on, continue standing as we lift this song to the Lord. How many of you love him this morning? Because he's a great God. Yeah. Come on, German Town, let's get this. We've been singing this all month. It just says a simple Lord, song. It says, Lord, I love you. On the screen. Lord, I love you. Yes, yes, yes I love, I love you. you. Just for who you are.
Come on, anybody love him for that? You don't mind saying it. because of the cars, but just for who you are.
church or is it afternoon so blessed to be here this afternoon so great to see all your holy faces I have the pleasure of presenting an honor to a trailblazer you know they roses while they're alive because they don't know when they're going how we felt about them. So a person, this young lady, she'll know who it is as I begin to read some of her bio. She graduated from Columbia Union College with a Bachelor's of Arts in Food and Nutrition. She completed her dietitianship at Howard University. She received her Master's of Science in Health Administration from St. Joe's University. Then she had the nerve to go on and get her PhD in public health with an emphasis in community health from Walden University. She is currently married and the mother of three adult children. She is a grandmother and a great-grandmother. In her free time, you heard me, free time, uh, she enjoys needlework, quilting, gardening. She has time to read. And she also enjoys vegetarian meal planning. But on top of that, she enjoys raising and showing African violet plants. She has currently served as the president of her local chapter and also as a chairperson. But she also still works. She has worked in public health for more than 30 years. She's a registered dietitian and an executive director of a federally funded supplemental nutrition education program for women, infants, and children, affectionately known as the WIC program in Philadelphia which is one of the largest single county programs in the Commonwealth. They have more than 52,000 participants. They have nine full-time programs and three satellite offices. And under her leadership, the program has received five consecutive clean fiscal audits and their monthly client participation is 85% or better. Now I have to say, if you know anything about an audit, okay? And they have five consecutive ones. And also I have to throw in there that she's responsible for employment of many. And you all know who you are. In addition to that, in this, she works with other organizations to ensure fair and equitable access to health and nutrition to the underserved population. She serves as a member of the National WIC Association Board and also the Board of Pennsylvania WIC Association. She's a member of the SDA Dietetic Association and she served as president from 1971 to 2001. She also has been a part of the Philadelphia Maternity Mortality Review Committee, the Philadelphia Federal uh, Fetal and Infant Mortality and Morbidity Review Committee, the Frazier Family Coalition, and that's just to name a few. 
In addition to that, she has also been instrumental in the development of a vegetarian resource, which is on a CD and is in publication. And with all of that, she is passionate about mentoring future nutrition professionals. She serves as a preceptor for several public health and nutrition programs for colleges and universities throughout the country. She has ensured that their academic successes and studies are supplemented with practical and hands-on experience within the diverse community of Philadelphia. And I have to say this honor is personal to me because I was one of those people that she mentored. Because of this young lady, I finished my dissertation. She kept coming to me and saying, do you need some help? And I kept saying, I'm okay, I'm okay. And she kept coming back. And then finally, I got some sense. <laughs> and I said, yes, I need your help. And she would Google duel me and I send her what I wrote. And I kept getting it back from my chair. I was three chapters in and I had to do six. And I kept getting them back and it was a circle. It was a circle. When she sat down with me, either face to face or online, we spent hours and she went through line by line by line and got my dissertation together. And when we sent chapter one in, it went through. We sent chapter went through. We sent chapter three and it went through. Every chapter I sent in after her went through. And I can say in 2019, I became Dr. Moore Jervis, thanks to this young lady. And so she's done that just not for me, but so many other people. And so I present to you our living trailblazer, Dr. Linda Kilby. children here, but my family's back there. Please see them. My daughter, my sisters, my brother, my granddaughter. When the Lord tells you that you have something that you have to do, you have to do it. Um, just to give you an idea, of the people who've had the opportunity of working with Wick. Could you stand? <laughs> this wasn't about me, yes. Where's Alice? There she is. <sighs> people say, why are you still working? I work because I enjoy working. My family said, are you still working? Because I enjoy what I do. Here in Philadelphia, we have so many needs. Prior to the pandemic, we were serving about 52,000 families here in Philadelphia. During the pandemic, it went down to about 37. 
praise God, we're up to 44. We're serving them. We're serving them in 10 offices throughout the county. We're about to open two more offices here in the county. Um, we're about to start our um, satellite offices um, again because they've been closed. This is because there is a need. And the Lord has blessed me. He, he gives me the energy to get up every day. He gives me the energy to deal with the problems every day. And I keep coming back because I enjoy it. So I thank you, but know that the WIC program is something that provides services to women, infants, and children here in Philadelphia who are in need. Not only do we give them food, we give them information, we give them education so that they can go forward and they can share it. It's not about what you do that you keep, it's about what you share. So what I do, I share. I share so that others can can benefit don't forget grab and go that's what we're doing here at germantown and we need your help we need your help we need you to help us with grab and go we need your funds so we can continue to purchase those cards we need your help so that we can get the food ready for distribution so thank you so much thank you pastor Come on, Germantown, let's come together. Let's pray for her. Amen. There is something, there is something anointed in feeding people. There's something anointed about it. Let's pray for Dr. Linda Kilby at this time. God, we thank you. We thank you for her life. We thank you for the victories and the triumphs. We thank you for how you have used your daughter to bring life to people. I ask the Lord that you would restore unto her all that she has poured out. I ask, oh God, that even the next season of her life would be the best season of her life. I pray to the Lord that you would continue to expand her reach, her influence. I pray to the Lord that you would multiply her and be with those who are learning from her and under her. We thank you, God, for the women who have blazed trails for others. And we ask, oh God, that through people like Dr. Kilby and others, you would continue to shatter glass ceilings. That is our prayer. Thank you for her life and her legacy in Jesus' name. Come on, Germantown, let everybody say amen. Amen. Our choir is going to lead us in worship, and then we'll prepare to hear the word of God.
the goodness of Jesus and all that he's given to us. This is an opportunity to give back to him. Amen, everybody. You usually see a video on the screen. What we want you to know is that we are in a season of giving and sacrifice here at the Germantown SDA Church. We believe that we give because he's given all for us. Amen. There are a few ways that you are able to give. We know that you can give through text. You can give online if you go to AdventistGiving.org. I'm going to ask that we put that on the screen while the choir sings. Amen. We're going to put that on the screen. There are many ways to give. Listen, we are in a season where we are trying to expand our children's ministry. Amen. Our music ministry, our outreach ministry. And so we need your help. We need your help and your faithfulness and your giving. We praise God for those who are giving, those who want to give. Amen. And so we are about to give. I'm going to ask that you would pray. We are going to collect our offering of our ushers and get ready. We are going to collect our offering and we are going to pray. And then we are going to hear this choir and this ministry lead us once again. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together at this time. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to give. We thank you for your goodness and your grace in our lives. We ask, oh God, that you would take these gifts, take this offering, and use it for the furthering of your gospel. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's stand all over the sanctuary as we prepare for prayer. Amen. 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 Let us pray together. God, we thank you that we don't have to cry. We thank you that your word is true when you say you will wipe every tear from their eyes. We thank you, Lord, for being alive. We thank you for being a living Savior. And now, Lord, somebody came today because they need to hear a word from you. Lord, we need you to speak today because in your word there's power. In your word there's healing. In your word there's breakthrough. In your word there is deliverance. So, God, we ask that you would speak to us today through your word. And when we leave, we won't talk about who preached or who sang. But we'll say that we had an encounter with Jesus. And our lives have changed as a result. Thank you for what you would say through your word. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen and amen. As you remain standing, can we just put our hands together for the music ministry today? Amen. As you remain rested on your feet, I just want to say it's good to see you all today. Amen. Look at somebody and say, it's good to see you today. Good to see you in church today. Amen. I want to look at the book of Mark chapter 16, and you should be able to find it on the screens to my left and to my right. Mark chapter 16, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. Anybody need a word from the Lord today? Do anybody really need to hear from God today? Mark 16, 16 verse 1 through 8, I promise you, I'm not going to hold you long. We're going to just get right into it and get outside. Amen, somebody. Mark 16, verse 1 through 8. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early on the mor- in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone? from the door of the tomb for us. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. In other words, they were afraid. They were scared. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. Verse 8. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. As you take your seats, I want to speak today on the topic, the mechanics of a miracle. The mechanics of a miracle. Listen, family, I am a born and raised Seventh day Adventist Christian. And when I say that I'm in this church, I'm like legit in this church. Like legit. Like third and fourth, third and fourth generation on both sides. Come on, somebody. Literally, before uh, first thing I ate was veggie meat. Come on in here, somebody. I wish I had a church in here. Morning Star was a staple. We should have like stock and Morning Star in my house. I wish I had a church. Somebody like, what are you talking about? Google it. Amen. Amen. I, I was raised. Uh, I remember when you didn't just have 11:30 service. No, no, you had a 11 o'clock service because 11 o'clock was the divine worship hour. Somebody don't know what I'm talking about. And, and, and it was 11 o'clock, and then you had an afternoon. You didn't just go home. Come on, somebody. You, had an after, you would eat lunch at church and, and hang out at church. Sabbath was an all-day experience. I wish I had a church in here. You were here from 9 till sunset. You guarded the edges. Is am I talking to anybody today? And, and you, stayed, you stayed till the afternoon program called AY. S. Come on in here. Before it was A-Y-M, but before that, it was M-V, Missionary Vi. I wish I had somebody here today. Somebody is like, what is he talking about? I, I'm born and raised in this church, and, and, I, and I love my church. I do. I love, I think God is moving in this faith group. But one of the things that I'm concerned about, can I be honest, y'all, is that we have such a, ah, a focus on 
truth and knowledge. That many of us come into the church and we come into the church based on knowing certain things. Knowing certain teachings, knowing certain doctrines, knowing the right things, that it is possible that our faith could become something of knowledge and not experience. Oh, can I talk to somebody today? That it could become such an intellectual faith that it becomes about what you know and what you remember and what you can recite. But I want to get to a place where my faith is not just intellectual, but I want a faith that still leaves room for the miraculous mysteries of God. I don't want to just have a God who I can know and understand. I want a God who still does things that'll make you blow your mind. I want a God who can still take a bad situation and flip it and turn it around. I want the God who can still operate in the realm of the miraculous. No, I don't just want a faith that is intellectual. I want a faith that is experiential. And am I talking to anyone in here who knows that God still performs miracles? Yeah, yeah, you want to know what a miracle is. A miracle is when the divine interrupts the natural. The miracle is when the natural was going to go one way, but on the process to its completion, the divine disrupted the end of the natural and it turned the situation around. A miracle is when, can I go down the road? A miracle is when you applied for the job and there were people who already had someone they wanted to give the position to and they were ready to give them the position that you applied for and then the natural would have given them to somebody else but somehow you were ready to get the letter that says thanks for applying, we've decided to go in a different direction but then the divine disrupted the natural and then you got a call that you did not expect. That is a miracle. Who am I talking to? Okay, y'all still not with me a miracle is when you're driving on the road and the truth is you swerved one way and it was not visible and you should have ended up upside down in the median but somehow the angel of the Lord took over the steering wheel and you made it from point A to point B. That's a miracle. A miracle is when the doctor walked into the room and said no I don't know what we're going to do. Let's get ready with our next steps. Uh, but you said I know what you say but I know the great physician and when the doctor said said no. Dr. Jesus disrupted the health. Am I talking to anyone? Is there anyone in the room that can say, I'm a living witness. I am an ocular demonstration. I know that God works miracles. Is there anybody in here who's experienced a miracle? Is there anyone in the room that can testify? I've seen the divine disrupt the natural. It wasn't supposed to work out this way. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. But God got in the midst of it, and a miracle took place. And, 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 and the ultimate miracle is what we're talking about this weekend. Because this is the story of Jesus dying. It, it wasn't just a nap. He was dead, really dead, for real, for real dead, three days dead. Come on in here. And the miracle is that when they killed him, he got to live again. Okay, that's not deep. That's not deep. That's not deep. You know, one of the things that we understand about the story is that our faith is rooted in a person dying and coming back. And the greatest miracle is when people leave you for dead and you still are alive. Oh, am I talking to anybody in here? I know i got to get into the text, but is there anybody in the room that can testify that we serve a God who when people leave you for dead, you are still alive and still living? That is a miracle. The mechanics of a miracle show up in this passage. This passage is simple. The Bible says that uh, Jesus dies and the women, uh, I want you to get this, the women walk to the tomb. And they are going to the tomb to anoint the corpse of Jesus. 
they are walking to the tomb to deal with the dead body of Jesus. And they ask themselves on the way there, who is going to roll the stone away? And they don't even get an answer to the question. They walk to the grave anyway. And when they get to the grave, they are expecting a corpse of a dead Jesus to be laying there. But when they get into the tomb, God does what they did not expect. And the tomb is empty. And they don't see Jesus, but they see a messenger from the Lord. And he says, I know that what you're looking for, you are looking for a dead person. But I came to tell you the dead person is alive. You have come to the wrong place. If you wait a minute, you have come to the wrong place if you're looking for Jesus because he is not here. He has risen as he said. And can I share with you all, can I share with you, wait, hold on, can I share with you the mechanics of a miracle? Is that all right? The first thing that we learn about miracles in this text is that miracles create unlikely messengers. Okay, y'all, y'all not with me today? Because the Bible says, watch this, that Jesus is dead. And I want you to look at the figures who are going to the tomb. Bible says it is Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is dead, and the people who go to the tomb, Mary Magdalene. Now, Mary Magdalene had seven demons. Come on in here. You know that seven is the number of completion. Come on in here. So she was completely possessed, right? And then you have Mary, the mother of James, and then you have Solomon. And they are coming to the tomb. Watch this, y'all. Here's the first point. They are coming to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. The first thing I want you to understand is that I don't want you to miss that this is the second to last day of Women's History Month. And I do want you to understand that the first people to know that the tomb was empty were Women. Okay, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. These are women who just experienced the trauma of Calvary. And what you will notice is the women are coming to the tomb by themselves. I feel like preaching today. The reason why these women are coming to the tomb by themselves is because the men who were around Jesus are hiding because they're scared. Oh, I feel like talking to somebody today. They all experience, wait a minute, they all experience the mirror. They all experience the death. They all lost their friend. But the men are so punkish and scared that they say, we ain't leaving the crib because it's hot outside. I wish I was talking to somebody. I ain't talking about temperature. I'm talking about the atmosphere of the environment. I wish I was talking to somebody today. The brothers say, there's a hit on Jesus. There's a hit on us. So we're going to stay home and stay locked away. But the women, this is real, I know that they are black women because the women say, I know that we just saw the crucifixion. I know that I'm crying. I know that I'm grieving. I lost my son. I lost my friend. I lost my boy too. I, he wasn't just your Jesus. He was our Jesus. But guess what? We still have a responsibility to go and anoint the dead body. Y'all missed it. Ain't it just like women? I wish I was talking to somebody. Uh, are there anybody in here who knows that women have a supernatural power and women being able to be stressed and still do what they got to do? I mean, I want to praise God. God for the women in here because women have the ability to be sick and still make it happen. Women know how to juggle multiple things at the same time. Is there anyone in here that can praise God for the women who know how to handle business? Are there any women in here that can testify? I'm a living witness that I've had to cry and work. I've had to be stressed out and still make it happen. Are there any women in here who can praise God for other women who are making it happen even if you're tired, even if you're stressed out. And here's the shout, that it was women who see the empty tomb. Now, women have no rights in this culture. Women have no rights in society. Women are the lowest people on the earth at this time. But the text says that when the tomb is empty, here's the shout, that the angel sends women to go and tell everybody that he's alive. Oh, y'all missed it. No one should be listening to women. But when the first gospel of evangelism needs to be preached, it was not men, it was women. So if you don't think that women ought to be preaching, you need to Read your Bible because the first evangelistic meeting that ever took place was some women who declared the good news of God. And here's the point for everybody. Won't God turn 
uh, the wrong people into the right messengers? Is there anybody in the room that can testify that my history should not allow me to talk about Jesus, but God will turn a drunkard into a deacon? God will turn a pimp into a preacher? God will turn you into a saint? Is there anybody in here that can give God a praise that he will qualify you? Oh, I feel my help now to give you a message. Number one, uh, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Uh, number one, he will create unlikely messengers. But number two, y'all y'all still with me today? Number two, I feel like shouting it here. Number two, miracles require movement. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, let me say that again. The women are going to the tomb. The tomb was closed and sealed. And they are going to anoint the dead body of Jesus. Uh -huh. And they ask a question among themselves. Watch this. Y'all about to get it. They say, who will roll away the stone? Because there are Roman soldiers there. And they're not going to roll away the stone. The stone is also very big. They need to get into the tomb. But the problem is the stone is in the way. Oh, I feel like preaching this thing. And so they ask who will roll away the stone. And watch this, y'all. The text says that after they ask this question, brother, they look up and the stone was moved. Okay, but wait a minute. Y'all missed it. When they ask the question, they are not yet at the tomb. So they are saying, who will roll the stone away? And when they look up, it's rolled away. But when they ask it, they don't know that it's rolled away. The implication is that they ask who will do it, and they don't get an answer to their question. And for many of us, watch this, before we step out on faith and make a move, we wait until all the answers before we step out and keep on walking. Oh, y'all missed it. There's somebody in here who is missing a miracle. We see it on the screen. You can take it down. It's all right. It's distracting. We, we, y'all with me today? You we okay? Are we good? Are we good? Listen, they know that the tomb is locked up. They don't know who will roll it away. But look, they say, we are not going to wait until we get an answer for how it is going to work out. We're going to keep on walking until we get to the stone. And we are going to trust and believe that although we don't have all the answers, by the time we get where we are supposed to be, it will already be worked out. Because somebody is waiting to get all the answers for you to step out on faith. God told you start the business. And you are saying, who will roll away the stone? Will I get the loan? Will I get the money? God is saying, I ain't asked you all that. And I ain't going to tell you all that. You just start working on it. Am I talking to anybody? Somebody, God said, go back to school. And you're saying, who's going to roll the stone away? And I ain't been in school in 20-some years. And I ain't got no money. God says, I ain't asked if you had any money. I told you to go to the tomb. Because you got to understand that we don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes, I feel like talking to somebody, you got to walk without all the answers. You got to walk without knowing how it's going to end up. Because the word tells us that we walk by by faith and not my sight. And I came to preach to someone in here, and I came to tell you, start walking toward what God wants you to have. And as you start walking, God will be at the destination already working it. Because when you walk it out, that's when God will work it out. Remember the story of the lepers, the lepers who came to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, have mercy on me, and Jesus doesn't heal them. He says, go and show yourself to the priest. And the implication is that while they were walking, Walking, they were being healed. That as long as they kept on walking, God was working. And I came to see if there's anybody here that can testify that when you walk it out, God will work it out. That when you take steps, God will open your doors. Is there anyone in here that can give God an amen right there? That you know that you didn't step out, you didn't step out knowing how it was going to end up, but you just kept on walking. And as you kept on walking, God kept on working. Is there anyone that can give God a praise right there that you 
walked and God worked. You walked and God opened doors. You walked and God made a way. And as you kept on walking and God kept on working, when you looked up, you said, what a mighty God we serve. I don't know how it happened. I don't know when it happened. But I praise God that it happened. Is there anyone in here that can praise God that when you walk it out, God will work it out? Uh, I feel good now. And so they're walking. Watch this, Dom. They're walking, and they're walking to the tomb, and they don't know how it's going to work out. But the Bible says when they get there, the stone was rolled away. Now, you got to understand, who put the stone on the tomb? The church people and the political people. Ah, oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. You see, uh, uh, when they killed Jesus, the religious leaders... And the political leader said, y'all know this man is a liar. And he told us, y'all heard him, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. That crazy liar, he said that if you kill me, I'm going to rise again. They heard what he said. But the political people and the religious people say, let's stop it from happening. They say, if we don't guard the tomb, oh, I like preaching this thing, then his followers will come and steal the body. So now it's funny that the religious people spent the Sabbath doing this. So the religious people spent the Sabbath working on keeping Jesus in the tomb. Okay. And so they say, here's what we're going to do to keep him in the tomb. They say, let's roll a big stone on top of it. Let's put a Roman seal on it, and let's put guards in front of it. Because they say, we don't want anyone else, ooh, watch this, to get into the tomb. Yeah. So they wanted to lock out access for these women. Ooh, I feel like preaching this thing. But a miracle, here's the last point, is not about your strength. A miracle is when God does what you could never do. Ooh, watch this. And so when they get to the tomb, they didn't got to worry about who was going to roll it away. Because rolling it away was never their responsibility. Ah, God said, if you just walk, I ain't going to ask you to try to open your own doors. Oh, if I preach it, I'm done. I'm not going to ask you to roll your own stones away. If I called you to it, then it is my responsibility to open the opportunity. You ever been to a store and you've been to the store and you go to the grocery store and there are these automatic doors and it is your responsibility not to push the door because if you push it, you'll break it. But it is your responsibility just to walk up on it. And when you walk up on it, it will naturally open. And that's the word that I came to give somebody today. There's somebody here, you are stressed out about somebody trying to keep you from something, or you have believed the lies that your haters or your enemies or the people that want you harm, that they are going to accomplish their plan against you. I came to just tell you, go to bed, get some snacks, watch a movie, go get a massage, relax and chill. Because if God has called you to it, it is God's responsibility to roll the stone away. It ain't about your strength. You ain't got a deadlift. You ain't got to press nothing. You just stand still and say, God, if you called me to it, I know that you'll see me through it. That's why I came to tell some young professional in here, you ain't got to kiss nobody's behind to get what God has for you. You ain't got to talk a certain way, put your hair a certain way. You ain't got to joke or job for anybody. If God is going to remove the stone, I wish I had a church in here. If God is going to open the door, God's going to do it and you ain't got to stress about it. I came to tell somebody you ain't got to compromise your morals, your standards for a boo. If God is going to give you a bay, God's going to do it. You ain't got to compromise. You ain't got to lower your standards. You ain't got to lower your, am I talking to anybody here who knows that God opens doors? I'm finished preaching, but is there anyone in the room that can just give God a praise that God opens your doors, that you ain't got to politic and you ain't got to connive and you ain't got to cut nobody else down but God rolls stones away God opens doors God gives you seats
needs. God provides for you. Am I preaching to anyone in here? They can help me close this sermon and just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's a rolling stone type God. He will move the stone and he will knock it over and he will make ways and he will open doors. He removes the stone. Well, I'm done. But they get into the tomb. And the last thing I want you to know about a miracle is that a miracle doesn't just create unlikely messengers. In a miracle, it's not just about movement. In a miracle, it's not about your strength. But the last thing I want you to see is that the ultimate miracle is not what's in the tomb. It's what's not there. Ah, boom, watch this. Because here it is. They show up where they left Jesus. They show up based on their memory of him. Oh, oh. Watch this, wait. They go to the tomb to deal with him in his death because that's where they left him and that's where they remember him. But the miracle is, watch this, that when they want to deal with him based on how they last left him, he is no longer there, signifying that the last way you saw me cannot be the way I'm always going to be. Oh, y'all missed it. That they, ha, huh, they show up to deal with a dead Jesus. But Jesus says, I ain't dead no more. So if you are coming to a tomb looking for me, you are in the wrong place because I don't live here no more. You see, the ultimate miracle is not just the resurrection of Jesus, but the ultimate miracle is the resurrection of me because I used to live in some tombs. Some people remember me in my dead season. Some people saw you on your Friday and they will, after you've had an experience with Jesus, they will go back to your old tomb looking for the old you to do the stuff that you do with dead people but that's when they will find an angel and an angel will say I know you're looking for Mark you last saw him strung out you last saw him drunk you last saw him a mess but he don't live here no more God bought him out and now he's a new creature and is there anyone in here that wants to say to those who used to know you I don't live in the tomb anymore if you're looking for the dead me you're looking for the wrong me because God has bought me out now this is not for everybody but are there any honest saints who can say I used to be in some tombs and I used to be dead and people will talk to you like what you used to be but you gotta tell them you got the wrong Negro I am not a corpse I am born again and is there anyone in here that can help me close this sermon and just say neighbor don't leave me where you left me I'm not in the tomb but God brought me out God gave me new life and is there anyone in here that can help me close this sermon and say that's my story God will bring you out of the tomb watch this I'm done but the Bible says that they look for Jesus and they say Jesus we ain't gonna find you in the tomb but we're gonna find you where you are because it's not just about the empty tomb you got to find where the Savior is and when they get to the Savior they see that after the death and after the funeral and after the beating it was not the end of the story but I'm grateful on today that if God can bring Jesus out God can bring you out I gotta close it because it's Easter I'm grateful that the blood still works I'm grateful that he prayed in a garden until sweat like drops of blood um, fell from his head. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that they took him uh, from unjust court to unjust court, uh, but he did not utter uh, a mumbling word. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that for me, uh, he took on my sins uh, and he died. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that they hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head, uh, and for me, he died. Uh, but I'm grateful uh, that that's not how the story ends. Uh,
But in three days, I said three days, I said three days, he rose again. I'm grateful that he got up with all power in his hand. And if God can raise Jesus from the dead, God can raise you from the dead. But not only did God get him up, but the Bible says, fear not, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, then I will come again and receive you unto myself. I'm grateful for the first resurrection. But is there anyone in here who knows that the first resurrection ain't the last resurrection? The Bible says that when the angel shall blow the trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise first and we who are alive shall be caught up to meet him. I've got a father I want to see. Have you got family that you want to greet? Well, the song says, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in a mansion bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. I'll sing and shout. Oh, I want to see him. Want to look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Is there anyone in here that can give God? And I can't wait to see you praise. Hallelujah. When I get there, I'm going to sing. Never get tired. I'm going to shout and not get weary. I'm going to put on my robe. Tell the Tell the story how I made it. I gotta let it go. But are there any crazy people that can say when we all get there, I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you saw the first resurrection, was amazing. Just wait till God pops. Just wait until tombs are open. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, 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 yeah. Soon, and very soon, we're going to see not Obama, not Joe Biden, Trump, but Jesus, 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 King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jesus, my Savior, Jesus, my Redeemer, Jesus.
the, the second coming of Jesus will be the ultimate experience that mirrors what happened at Calvary. Because, y'all, this earth is dying. Y'all hear what I said? Earth is getting worse every day. We have loved ones who we've lost. The good news is that the first resurrection is just a sign of that next resurrection. Come on, can somebody give out a praise right there? And you don't have to wait until he comes to experience resurrection power. Because he is not just bringing people from death to life in the end. He can bring you from death to life right now. I don't care what tomb you've been in. I don't care how long you've been buried. I don't care how long you've been in. God will bring you out. God will give you new life. And when he comes back, you'll be ready to see him. He will turn your grave into a garden. He will turn your mourning to dancing. He will turn your sorrow into joy. Is there anybody that knows that today? Come on, anybody that knows that today? We're standing all over the sanctuary. We're standing all over the sanctuary. If you're able, we're standing all over the sanctuary. today. You've been living in a tomb and it's time for you. You've heard the gospel. It's time for you to make a decision for Jesus. Maybe you want to be baptized. Maybe you want to join the church. Maybe you want to start Bible studies. But if that's you, I'm going to ask right now that you would get out of your seat and join me at the front of the aisle. I believe that you are here today. You heard the message. Maybe you came because it's Easter. Maybe you came because you were invited by a family or friend. But you realize today, you came here to say yes to God. You came here to come out of your tomb. And if today, you are ready to accept Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to ask our elders are here. I'm going to ask you to come forward right now. Where are you in here? To show you my come weakness. On. Where are you in here? Where are you in here? He's calling. My failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all. And you still call me friend. Is there a Because the God of the mountain. Is the God Come on, I'm waiting the for you. Where are you? If you know that you are not ready to meet him when he comes, and you want to spend eternity 
with him. I'm going to ask you to join me. Where are you here? watching in the overflow. Maybe you're watching downstairs. Oh, well, we're calling you now. Where are you? Nothing is better than you. I gotta let it go. but I believe there may be one person, you two, three, four, five. You heard the gospel. Bring it down. Bring it down. You've heard the gospel. You and you are saying, I want to make a decision for Jesus today. If that's you, I'm waiting for you. If that's you, where are you in here? You this is a good church. This is good ground. This is good soil. And I'm going to ask you to come on you forward. Where are you in here? You give beauty You turn shame into glory. You're the we preach, we do all this so that people can be ready to meet him you turn when he comes. Into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who cares. Let's pray today. God, we thank you for the ultimate resurrection that is found in Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you turn graves into gardens. We thank you, Lord, that the tomb is not the end of the story. We thank you that you provide new life. We thank you for resurrection power. We thank you for all that you are doing to transform our lives. God, I pray for somebody who is facing a closed tomb. I pray that you would open it for them. I pray for somebody that's been living in a tomb. I pray that you would resurrect them. And Lord, we look forward to the day when every eye shall see him. We look forward to the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Until then, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen, amen, amen. You may be seated, amen. Did you enjoy yourselves in worship today? Y'all, listen, the Lord has richly blessed our congregation, and we are getting ready. I think we're ready to announce how to go outside. Um, we are waiting. Uh, we are excited for what God is about to do outside in our fellowship. But y'all, God has blessed our congregation with 14 new members since October. Come on, Germantown. Y'all could do better than that. And so here, here, here's... What we are going to do, what we do is something called a right hand of fellowship. Now listen, this is going to be the end of worship. So we're going to come up and they're going to ushers, please follow them. And I just want you to participate. It is just welcoming our new members into the life of our church, y'all. Is that all right? And they're going to usher you around and outside. Is that all right, everybody? Can we do that, everybody? Listen, but, so a few things I want you to know. When you go outside, you are going to have to register. Somebody say Register. 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 You cannot get food from the food truck. You can't get snacks. Can't get your picture taken without a ticket. Come on in here. So we're asking you to please register. Amen, somebody. And after that, there will be all of those things will be happening outside. If you want prayer, we are going to have a prayer room in the church house. So if you just want to go and pray with somebody, we have people who are ready and prepared to pray with you. We also have outside bathrooms. Amen, somebody. Now, let me be clear. They are not porter potties. Come on in here. They are bathrooms. Amen. There is a difference. Come on in here. And so we do it right at Germantown. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. So let's, let's, let's do this. Let us, uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to invite our new members to our church at this time. Germantown, can y'all help me? Welcome them when I call their names, y'all. First, I'm going to ask 
Aaliyah Watkins to come forward. Aaliyah, come on, Aaliyah. Anaya Rose Norfleet. Come on, Anaya. Anthony Mullins. Come on, Anthony. Cheryl Wilson. Come on, Cheryl. Chimdia Ahukana. Come on, Chimdia. Chino Ahukana. Come on, Chino. Ebony Ivy Edwards. Where's Ebony? Come on, Ebony. Gavin Ralph. Gavin, where's Gavin? Isaiah Mandela Johnson. Giovanni Lewin. Jeffrey Toussaint. Kim Reed. Mercedes Hardy. Paulette Skeens. Rochelle Hall. And Theo Knight Tomlinson. Where's Theo? Somebody say he outside working. Go get Theo. Come on in here. Amen. Y'all, Germantown, can y'all one more just time put your hands together for our new family members. Amen. We have gifts for each and every one of them. Where's the we're gonna do? I'm gonna do the I'm gonna ask us to stand. We'll do the benediction. Morgan and I, Corey, we will walk around. Our elders will follow. Elders, elders, where are the elders? Get ready. Deacons will follow. And, uh, uh, and all of our officers. And then we're going to follow around. Y'all show them some love as we welcome them to this church. Amen. So let's stand for the benediction, everybody. Let's stand. Let's stand for the benediction. Let's stand. But don't rush out. Don't rush out. Please don't rush out. Let's shake their hands. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this time in worship. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you, God, for these new members. We thank you for the songs that have been sung and the words that have been spoken. We ask that this would not be a moment, but that this would be the beginning of a movement in this church and in our lives. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the empty tomb. And we thank you for the promise of your return. Watch over us and keep us is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Come on, let everybody say amen, amen. and amen.